Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a mailbag time. I haven't done one of these videos in a while and I got quite a lot of things here. So let's get going with starting out with some of the things that I think are pretty interesting, I guess. So let's go ahead and put these to the side. So I got the Furious FPV Achilles one. Uh, this is the Fat Shark module that I'll be testing very soon. I have been testing it indoors and just double checking, seeing how the, the functions are. We'll see a video of this coming up very soon. And I also want to compare against to the Owl RC and also the GFPV. And hopefully I'll also get in the Rapid Fire module to actually test and it's going to be pretty interesting. So yeah, stay tuned for this one. Also got a couple things from AKK such as the Race VTX. However, I haven't released a video on it just yet, some of their new VTXs, because I'm still waiting for basically the RF power meter to arrive. And I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on a proper spectrum analyzer to actually test these VTXs and come up with a really nice way to test them, kind of like we do with the ESC testing. So yeah, these will be upcoming very soon. Also, the new awesome AT Lattle Mini VTX. Uh, this as well will be tested very soon here on the channel, and it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. And uh, let's see what else we got. I got a couple new cameras here. We got new two Foxier cameras, the Predator V3 and the Foxier Aero Mini. Now these are really nice actually. When you when you take a closer look at them, they have this really huge lens. And which one was this one again? This one was the Predator V3. So I'm going to be doing latency testing. Uh, video quality testing won't come up so early. It'll take some time because um, just the weather has been terrible. And also my car is still currently in repair. I got good news today that they might be able to figure out what's wrong with it and hopefully possibly by tomorrow it'll be ready if it's nothing too major uh, so this one has wide dynamic range now you're going to see a lot more CMOS cameras in the market and you're also going to see a higher wi higher wide dynamic range because that is you know the, the thing to go for really because tvl lines is absolute bullshit i mean it's not really bullshit but you're not going it's not going to translate into your footage so tvl line just you know as long as it's above like what 700 uh, anything above 700, even even a little bit less, is, is all bullshit. But it's all about the wide dynamic range. That's what we, should, what we should be concentrating on, as well as the latency here. So Fox here is really going out. This is really massive. Look how long that thing is. So yeah, expect a video for these guys. Wide dynamic range. Just everyone's just marketing the wide dynamic range. Uh, the TVL lines, is, uh, and again, it's all bullshit because you can't really... Uh, send that into the analog signal because you got just PAL NTSC, I think maximum of 600 something lines and I'll get into a more depth video about that later on. So here, well, I think will be the next video is the Matek F722SE with dual cameras. So it's an F7 and I think it had, yeah, the dual gyros, SD, barometer, OSD, current sensor, just the whole, yeah, everything you want in here. So we're going to take a closer look at this uh, in the next video and it's going to be for a really nice a uh, piece of hardware basically. Let me just see if we can get it open here. So if we take a closer look, we do a little unboxing. They provide a 35 volt Rubicon 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor, rubber grommets. They're giving us exactly six, which is really nice. They always give a little spare. A huge shout out to uh, Maytech. Maytech is just proper shit, really. Uh, I love Maytech stuff. Uh, we have this PCB to kind of, you know, act like a spacer if you needed it on your stack, they, which they always provide, which is a huge plus. You know, the only issue I've ever since Maytech has started, the only thing that they don't provide you with is an XT60. And I've always been just bitching about that, but they just never did anyways. It doesn't really matter because it just doesn't affect the quality. Look at this. This is a beautiful little board. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Look at all that copper. I don't know if you guys are going to, the camera's going to do it justice here. So, you know, all-in-one boards, Maytech is the one to go to, in my opinion. All right. Maytech and uh, Hollybro are really good boards. There's also others as well, but those really just stick out, especially Maytech. Maytech is on my testing setup, and after thrashing that thing for over a year or more, it's just been a beast all around. So... Also, I got the lipo killer, as you can tell here. I've actually tested it. It takes so goddamn long to kill a lipo. I was really hoping that it would be a little bit faster. So there's still room in the market to make something a lot better than this. And uh, I'm actually thinking of creating it. Even if it doesn't hit the market, I'm actually just going to be creating it for myself at least. Because uh, winter now kind of sucks and um, I don't want to keep all my batteries charged. Uh, it's useful. It's somewhat useful. I mean, it'll do the job. It's very safe to do the job. Um, I did test it, but I just, you know, lost patience and I still don't trust something of this nature to leave it on without my supervision or me being in the room with it. It's just, it's scary for me. It's, it, you know, this just comes back to you. I just never, I would never leave something like this running in the background uh, when I'm not around or anything. So yeah, I got a couple of these. Actually, I got 10 of these. We're going to be seeing them in uh, depth later on. We'll see how much amperage they do actually pull and we can start calculating a couple things. We'll go over the PCB design, see what they did and uh, just take a look at it. So I think it's going to make for a pretty interesting video. 
So here's some interesting stuff. The AKK VTX that broadcasts is 2 watts. This is the beast. Look at this. We got two heat sinks on both sides. We got here and we got one here. Now, if you're going to be adding a fan, I'd highly recommend you add it on this side. But also on this side is okay also. So I'm planning on doing some kind of a 3D printed mod which will hold a fan and able to keep this cooled down. If I do ever choose to use the whole full 2 watts on this beast. And uh, I'm very curious to see how it's going to test. So this is going to be really, really interesting. Um, I know some people are not going to be able to get this one. But I'll have it linked down below in a couple places. Usually if you're in the US, if you get it from Banggood, you'll, have, you'll be able to get it. But AKK will not be able to ship it to you. So this is the FX2 Ultimate here. Uh, it's, I think it's up to 1,000 watts if I remember correctly. Oh, sorry, 1 watt, which is 1,000 milliwatts here. Uh, these are really nice VTXs. To be honest, this is what I'm actually putting in my RC airplanes. Uh, I just do trust them. I, I just have a lot of trust in AKK VTXs. And the reason for that is, is basically they're just a VTX manufacturer. So, you know, if they can't get this right, then they might as well just close and be out of business. But obviously they haven't. And obviously they're releasing really great stuff. So that says a lot about AKK, which is, it makes me a, a pretty big fan of their VTX. It's something that I can trust uh, using on one of my airplanes. Also, Banggood, uh, they decided to send me another one of those uh, 1S chargers. However, this is a 4 channel and it goes up to a 2S. Uh, I'll be testing it very soon. So it can charge via... Uh, this is kind of nice. I could see a lot of kind of a lot of use for it. It charges both 1S and 2S and you have all your ports for everything you're going to need. So if you take a closer look here, we'll get into this in a depth in more depth video later on. As you can tell here, we can actually charge a 2S LiPo through its balance ports, which is something really nice because some batteries have some weird connection or you just don't want to, you know, I don't know. I just I think it's really useful. I do have a couple things where I can see myself using it. And uh, we'll see that in a later video. And we'll actually compare both of them. The 2S version. This is a 1 and 2S version. And just the 1S version that I have over there. And uh, also, Banga decided to send me some micro batteries. Which was really nice of them. Uh, I've never gotten my micro batteries. Other than the ones that come in whatever micro I get. So we have these. They're actually on a really good price. These are 450 milliwatt 1S high volt. They come in a pack of five like this. I haven't tested them yet, so I can't really uh, say much about them until I actually test them. They also provide me with 250 milliamp, uh, a five pack also from URUAV. Now, URUAV, you need to take something into consideration. It's usually a hit and a miss. It's still a really new thing into the market. I do think it's actually Banggood branded, but I could be wrong. This is my current theory right now. Uh, I'll try to get try to figure it out more as, as time goes on. But as you can tell here, we have some uh, really nice batteries. I don't know how good they are. But we'll be testing these guys very soon on the channel and um, we'll see how well they perform compared to everything else that I have. So if they're really worth it. But it's really nice that the, it's, I think it was a really good price for five of these. But hopefully they do perform good, obviously. Also, check this out. I made a post on YouTube a while ago and I've been waiting for it to arrive and it just arrived a couple days ago. This antenna is freaking huge. Do you see that? That's just crazy. It works both right hand polarized and left hand polarized. And you could change that via this terminator right here. So you could just switch it now. That'll be left hand polarized and this will be right hand polarized. So this is going to be tested very soon and hopefully on our DIY antenna tracking system. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Uh, this will play a really big role. I'm very curious to see how it's going to perform. It looks really nice quality. It's um, And that's all I can really say. So it's based on an open source hardware project uh, designed by Martin Bort and Ruben Theonis. I don't know. It's, it's down there. That's really nice that they actually uh, gave the credit where credit is due. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to perform. They actually do give you this uh, carrying pouch with it. And to be honest, it's kind of recommended you get something like this for an antenna this large. Also, this thing is really interesting, which is the Top Sky Goggle. I mean, watch, FPV watch. Now, it doesn't do anything different. Other than the older one that was in the market, which is this one, except a couple things. Let me let's talk about this. Uh, this one here, first of all, the quality is a lot better. Even the uh, plastic here, it's kind of that soft plastic mix with something. It just feels really nice, and it looks like it's going to take an impact. That's one huge plus. This one is just you know just basic you know colorful toy plastic. This one seems like it'll take a hit. Another thing is, I don't know if this has a screen protector on, but I, yeah, it does. Okay, that's great. So it comes with a screen protector and definitely keep it on because these are the type of screens that will easily get scratched. So you might think it's scratched here, but it's actually just a screen protector. Now, some of the main differences are 
is, is actually in the hardware. I haven't taken them apart, but what I can tell you right off the bat, the, the power charging circuits are completely different. Because this one comes with a special proprietary USB to a micro USB that actually allow it to charge. And what that one was that came with this one is basically one of those 1S chargers. So there is no circuit in, in, inside the watch here to charge the battery correctly. However, here they've done that differently. You can use any wall charger, any USB on the new one and have it charged. So you don't have to have that basically proprietary cable in order to charge this. So keep that in mind. Also another huge addition is an MMCX port. So this will allow you to connect basically this if you wanted to, which is pretty insane. Now, some people were saying, I don't know what the hell this is going to be used for. It's got, you can't really fly. You, you're not, you're not, a lot, you're not, it's not meant for you to use this to fly. It's for a quick checkup, pre-checks, make sure everything is working. Um, you know, you're building something, make sure your VTX is working. It's a lot easier just to turn this on and see if everything is working than anything else. Check the current channel if you're on the cor correct channel or not. So that's something uh, what this is actually used for. So don't think you're going to be getting this from flying through this. It's going to be a, a pain in the ass to basically do that. However, this one or this one, actually I'm planning on doing this one. This one does all my pre-checks just fine. They're about the same price. But what I want to do with this one is you can tell we can access the internals a lot more easily, thus allowing me to add more mods. For example, a DVR mod, possibly even diversity mod, uh, which I'll probably create a spe special PCB for this to run actually diversity. It'll be pretty interesting once I crack this guy open and I have enough time for him. Uh, but first, I still need to finish the Eternity Evolution uh, TBS Crossfire slash R9M mod. So this is a really nice go this is a really nice watch. It's really cheap, 40 bucks, and um, it's really nice to have. It's nothing you really need, but it's something that's really nice to have. Also, I have the T-Motor Falcon 15 here. Um, I haven't taken it apart, and I'm trying to figure out what stack they're using inside. I still haven't figured that out just yet. Uh, but it's, it seems to be of great quality. They have, they're using these new T motors. However, I have two motors that are slightly harder to turn than the other. So I'm afraid there might be a short circuit or um, just might be just, uh, or was it this one or something else? Yeah, it was this one. Yeah, this motor is a little bit rougher than the other motors, but I haven't really uh, checked into it. Why just yet? So I'm just waiting for the weather to clear up to actually go test this thing. It looks really nice. Uh, the frame is somewhat flexible actually. Uh, but again, this is a two inch if I remember correctly. Uh, is it a two inch? Yes, it's a two inch here. They do provide an extra set of propellers and we'll be testing this guy soon on the channel. Hopefully I can find myself a nice gymnasium and also I'll be testing it outdoors on a non very windy day, basically and not very windy day because, you know, usually in windy days, you can't really fly these unless the motors are really awesome. Then that'd be actually great for a two inch because it's very difficult to build a two inch in my opinion. Very difficult. 2.5 inches, the golden class of the uh, smaller micro class motors that I really like. And as you can tell here, oh my god, what is this? An Iomway Commander Goggle V2. Yes, uh, I will be doing a teardown and we're going to take a look, closer look at this and actually be comparing it to the EV200s. Now, personally, I, I think it's very equal. I haven't put much time into this just yet, but I have been using it. Um, but I'll come in with my final result in a later video. And I want to see if I can get a lot of range on this as well. We'll be able to know the if the, if the receiver sensitivity sensitivity is any good, which you know theoretically means it can give us a lot more range. Because range is not only about the milliwatts you output; it's always it's also about the sensitivity of the receiver. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things you can check online. For example, see how NASA is able to communicate with its satellites that are like a trillion miles away. It's pretty crazy. I mean, they, like the satellites would broadcast at 20 watts, uh, whatever the frequency was. And then the, by the time it hits the receiver, you know, it'll be like point, the, 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 uh, the power of the signal would be like point like 15 zeros one two of a watt and it's actually still understanding that signal it's pretty remarkable actually so basically what, what this also is trying to show you is that it comes down to the sensitivity of your receiver and not only just the watts that are being uh outputted here and obviously the filtering from the noise because once it gets solo yeah but that's just a whole different other story we'll get to that later on what else do we have here? I also got the Ishin trash can. I have been flying it, but I don't think it would make a proper review video if I've just been flying it in a small three by three meter squared room. Um, overall, what I can tell you is it's really nice. It took some, it actually took a beating, uh, not a very bad beating, but it's, um, it's, it's a really nice freaking 
uh, micro here. It's 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 really awesome. Actually, I, mean, I can't fly 2s in here. It is way too fast. It is crazy fast for such you know something this small, especially that's well below. I think this is below uh, two inches if I remember correctly. So it, it's quite remarkable what they've done here. Uh, but there is a couple issues with the battery mounting solution, which I'm thinking of re designing something for because it's 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 really it wasn't really thought through i think in that perspective but you know I'm, I'm willing to let that go because of its freaking performance it's um it's quite remarkable actually whatever you've seen online it's 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 more than true to be honest and this i can agree to and i also got the yushin wizard hv you've probably seen it in a previous video when i talked a little bit about it that one needs time for the weather to clear up slightly so we can actually uh get a closer look on it but I think that's currently it. I do have a couple airplanes and stuff that I've arrived, but I just can't put out here. They're just too huge. One of them is like 2.4 meters. Uh, and the other one, the Volantix, I think. Or the Phoenix 2400. And also, I got two Dart XLs, which we'll see coming up very soon, hopefully. And um, should be pretty interesting. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.